Come on. Come on. You know you want to. What? Jam, <laughs> did it work? Did it work? I mean, if you did were meant work? to die, then it worked. <gasps> I was meant to die. Statistics. Mobs. Alley. Alley has killed you one time. I did it, Jam. I got killed by an alley. <laughs> did you just get killed by a passive mob? <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs> See ya, Jim. Welcome to Hermitcraft, everyone. Today, I've got a little bit of a special episode for you all. This is my final video of 2022. And for it, I've decided that I would like to answer some of your questions. So this is going to be a bit of a podcasty, talky sort of episode while we do a couple of things around the base and while I show you some of the things that I've done throughout the year. By the way, there's going to be a lot of talking. If you're not really into the talking thing, this is not for you. But I do recommend putting this on in the background, getting some chores done, whatever you need to do. We're gonna have a little chat. Now, I think one of the very first things we could do with around this base is definitely some more custom trees, particularly in this area around the balcony, now that the balcony is getting a lot more use. So let's gather these leaves and logs for some custom trees and get started with our first question, which is a building related one. The first question I'm going to answer is a fairly common one. This question comes from Sam on YouTube who says, how do you keep yourself motivated to build these massive structures? Your and all of the other Hermit's mega bases always amaze me and I would love to know how you manage to push through placing blocks to make an amazing build. That is a really good question, and to be honest, it is one that I wondered myself when I was a fan of Hermitcraft and not actually on Hermitcraft. I think the most honest answer for me personally is that if I wasn't really making YouTube videos, I would probably not make as many big mega structures. When I'm left alone to build in worlds off camera, I much prefer to build structures that are smaller, but sort of link together into something that's big. So like a bunch of little houses in a village, a bunch of little rooms in an underground cave, or a bunch of separate floating islands rather than one giant structure. I think that on multiplayer servers, these giant structures have have a lot more use because you're able to link them in with a lot of other people, tell cool stories to the viewer, and get really cool thumbnails. So I think my motivation a lot of the time comes from that. You know, I want the other hermits to be able to visit my base and really like what they see. I also want my viewers to see my base or visit it in the world downloads and like what they see. And I want the people watching these videos to be entertained. So I suppose that's all to say, you watching this video, you are my motivation. Thank you. Now, let's get the rest of these trees down. Now that we've chopped down some trees, we should probably start building some. And I'm thinking this side over here could really use some balancing out with that side. Maybe we can replace these couple of trees right here with some custom ones. I'm gonna have to take a little chunk of this forest out of here first though. And while I do that, I'll answer the next question, which comes from Saranya. And I'm super sorry if I'm saying any of your names wrong during this. Uh, I'm trying my best, I promise. Please correct me in the comments. This question says, how did you find out what your building aesthetic was? I love making cottage core builds with mostly wood, deep slate, and andesite, but I'm interested in other styles as well. How can I explore and find out what my aesthetic is? I feel like for me personally, when it comes to my aesthetic, I kind of got an aesthetic pinned on me more so than I actually actually picked one. I feel like I'm known for cottagecore things simply because I did cottagecore on my very first season of Hermitcraft. That's when a lot of you who are watching this would have got introduced to me and you just never knew any of my other styles. I'll post some pictures of some builds that I've done before Hermitcraft now and you can tell me if my aesthetic is actually cottagecore or if that's something that I was trying out. I think the answer here is that it, it is just something that I was trying out. Now don't get me wrong, I really liked cottagecore. It was a lot of fun to build in, but I was just kind of experimenting. I also think that that would be my advice to you. If you want to get into other styles, try them out. It might be for you, might be not for you, but you won't know until you try it. I feel like that's the best way to learn something about yourself. For me personally, I would say my normal aesthetic is something fantasy based. I love building dragons, I enjoy building organically, and structures tend to be something that I do struggle with a little bit more, at least typically when I was doing creative mode builds, I struggled with them. In survival mode, things are a little bit different and I have been branching out quite a bit, although people in my comments tend to tell me that I just build the same thing over and over. I get it though, because well, if you think about it, we've been working on this same structure now for a full year. So it's not really been a year of a lot of experimenting because survival mode's slow. There are, however, a bunch of aesthetics that I would personally really like to try. For example, I've really been looking into cyberpunk or solar punk type of themes. I've been getting into doing more redstone farms with my skyblock series that I have going and I feel 
feel like doing something in the cyberpunk style would go really good with having some like moving farms and stuff. Probably not something that I'm gonna do anytime soon, but it might be fun to experiment sometimes and never know, maybe I'll be known for that someday. Anyways, uh, good luck with your building. I'm gonna finish this tree now. Yep, it's a little curvy, but I think it's definitely better than what was there before. Good tree, solid tree. Next question. This question comes from Empty Pink Can, and they are wondering where I get all of my inspiration for projects and builds. I love this question, it's a lot of fun, but to be honest, my answer is quite boring. I get inspiration probably everywhere. Every movie, every book, every TV show, every place that I travel or see on TV, everything kind of inspires me. I will show you my creative test world though so that you can get an idea of how I start to build up these bases once I have my inspiration. This is my season nine build test world. You're probably gonna see some spoilers here, but this is the very first thing that I built in this world. It's ugly. It was my thoughts on a starter house. I ended up going with a tree. At the time, I also mocked up this little build, which I thought could be a starter house. I do still think this is kind of cute, but it was just an idea at the end of the day. I was just experimenting with a couple of different details that I could potentially do. Basically, when I'm building and looking for inspiration, I kind of think of a theme that I want to build within, and I start experimenting with different sizes, different block palettes, whatever I can do. So the inspiration doesn't really come from one thing. I'm not trying to recreate something. This time last year, we were ending season eight, and I wanted to get started during the break on what my mega base idea would be. So I hopped in a call with Pearlescent Moon, and me and her chatted for a little while about what our ideas were for a base. These were some of my first mock-ups. You'll notice they don't look anything like my mega base. That's probably for the best, they're very ugly. But these sort of experiments, you can kind of see me learning how to build again, because after building in cottage core for a while, I needed to learn how to do some more grand structures. Eventually, I moved on from that, and I created this. This cute little build right here, you will probably recognize as being a part of my current mega base. I didn't actually end up doing the green terracotta though. That looks kind of good. Maybe I should have, I don't know. Once I had this structure in place, I thought, well, this is a good structure, but I can't call this a mega base. It's a good size, but it's probably more of a mid-sized or smaller build than a mega base. So then I thought I'll build a gate. Why not? A gate would look cool. I could put a gate anywhere. And now you'll probably recognize this build as being the entrance to my actual base. And then as you can also see, I built this little component in the back and I separated this little tower out so I could paste it around in other places. And now we've got a solid four components that I could work with in a mega base. So then I took that section right there and I raised it up and I surrounded it in a couple of other things, which you'll see, and this is sort of much closer to what my mega base looks like. And you can also see last season's mega base in the back there. Anyways, that's my creative process, sort of. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I uh, I found your portal and I noticed all the prismarine around it. That's, uh, <laughs> it's obviously your thing this season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing prismarine. There's a little bit of amethyst here and like all the, all the cobble. I'm trying to tie in with my dwarf neighbor. Ah, oh, makes sense. Makes mm -hmm. sense. Oh, the, the castle's looking so good. Thank you. This is the back. And in typical <laughs> hermit see? fashion, it, 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 it is it is a back. <laughs> I mean, it's still, it still looks great. I, I still, I love the shapes. The, the shape of roofs like that is always so great. It's always the stuff that I struggle with. Like roofs were my nemesis for however long in this game. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, you wanted to go see my farm, right? Oh, there it is. Oh, see, seeing this in person much better like it, on videos it always looks spectacular but i love the wall and everything that you've done with this yeah i really like this area i feel like it worked out now the prismarine comes out down here and there's the mm -hmm. staircase um to be honest my shop's been a little lacking since it got stolen by the king but i did craft some recently so you can take from there or you can craft it yourself if you Ooh, want it perfect i suppose while we're here at the farm i should answer another couple of questions first one comes from andrew bloom who says did you integrate into the group as easily as it seemed or was it difficult and take time before you truly felt like you were a hermit this is a great question and i feel like it was asked a lot um i did feel like i integrated into the group fairly seamlessly i mean there's a lot of different people and a lot of different dynamics dynamics and existing friendships, but overall, everyone is super professional and welcoming. I do feel like I get along and make content quite easily with the vast majority of the group. I think the most challenging part of that sometimes is simply time zones. 
The second part of this question, since you asked me too, did it take time before I felt like I was a hermit? I think the answer to that is yes. Sometimes I still don't really feel like I'm a hermit. I feel like I've done all of these projects, like for example, this prismarine farm here, as a way to sort of prove that I could do it or prove that I could keep up with the hermits, but the hermits added Gemini Tay to the Hermitcraft server to be Gemini Tay, right? I don't need to keep up with anyone else or try to be anyone else. And I think the biggest pressure from that has come from the audience. There is unfortunately this subset of the audience that constantly wants me to be like any other hermit, basically a carbon copy of them. There's probably even going to be comments on this video about how it's only episode 20 and how dare I only be on episode 20 when other people are on episode 40. I think one of my goals for next season would be to stop allowing that criticism to even enter my brain because I don't think that it's helpful or productive to have me try to be just a carbon copy of another hermit. I want to be Gemini Tay and I want to play the game as Gemini Tay would. I feel like I've lost a little bit of myself this year and that's one of the things that I regret. I took in a lot of criticism and changed the way that I make videos or the way that I build or the way that I play based on what people were telling me they'd rather see me be. But I kind of want to get back to just what I am. And even when I just am what I am, Gemini Day, I I'll still be a hermit. Now, I want to organize a couple of things so that we can do a little bit more building. I think that'll do for the prismarine and the quartz, and then we need a little bit of wood. I think I'd like to work on this little structure over here. It's been a little bit neglected. I'm also not sure what is up with this giant black beacon. Impulse, what are you doing? The next question comes from Call Me Envy and says, Hey Gem, do you love being on two servers or do you struggle? This is another question that I definitely get a lot of and I understand I am in two servers and I guess that's considered weird. Um, the honest answer is no, I, I don't really struggle with it. This question is one of the biggest ones that I get and people are always very surprised that I'm in two SMPs. But I can't really think of any hermits that aren't in two projects. Not necessarily two SMPs, but just two projects. You know, like Impulse and Impulse's podcast or Impulse and Impulse's streams, or Iskal and Vault Hunters, or Mumbo and his photography, or Grayan and the Third Life series, or Corralis and that amazing keyboard and mouse company that he's got that is really awesome by the way. Or you've got Exuma and the Snapshot videos. I don't know, I just, every hermit that I can think of also has an awesome, amazing side project that they're passionate about. And while Empires isn't really a side project, it's an amazing series with my friends, it's still not too hard hard to keep up with Hermitcraft and Empires. At the end of the day, uh, they're just Minecraft servers. I'm just playing Minecraft. It's not too super hard, I have to admit. With that being said though, I think in 2023, I would like to have more solo projects as opposed to more SMPs. So, oh, is that correct? Oh no, that's not correct. Oh, talking and building is hard, hold on. So I'd like to do more stuff like my Skyblock series or maybe 100 day videos or other trendy buildy videos that I can participate in rather than all of the SMPs. As we were talking about earlier with all of the build styles, I feel like I would get to experiment a lot more if I also had some single player content on the side. I'd like to get back into little short building tutorials or random single player hardcore series, transforming villages, doing more mini series with friends on modded, things like that. Although I don't personally struggle to keep up with the two series, I feel like my channel would do a bit better if I had a little less content, if that makes sense. I want viewers to be able to keep up with what I'm doing, and if I start putting out a third series or a fourth series, that gets to be a little too much. So I do want to dial it back somehow, although I haven't figured out the logistics of exactly what I'm going to do with that yet. We shall just have to wait and see when the new year comes around. Love Impulse, but this speed beacon is a lot to build with. Don't know how he does it. Speaking of speed, that's looking a lot better, but we haven't gotten through very many questions yet, so maybe it's time for a speed round. And while we're doing that, I need some sandstone. First question is thoughts on being called Tay. I personally prefer to be called Gem, but I know some people in MCC don't know me and don't understand that, so I would never get mad at them for calling me Tay, but I much prefer Gem. Next question is video that you are most proud of and why. I am most proud of my 100 days Skyblock video. Not only is it the most viewed video on my channel, but I recorded that entire video late at night after working shifts in the hospital and writing exams in school. During COVID, it was a whole thing. It was a lot of 
work. It ended up performing really well. Gosh, that video was so, so challenging to make. And it really reminds me of how I overcame a lot of the challenges with being in college and being a full-time YouTuber at the same time and working in the hospital during a pandemic and just all of the things that we all went through in 2020. I feel like that video is something that I'll always be really proud of because of how it was made. There's actually a point in that video where it gets really laggy and that's because I was recording in the nether on my laptop, literally in bed at like 2 a.m. So yeah, it's, it's laggy and, and that's not ideal for a video that you're putting out on a million sub channel, but it just reminds me of where I was recording it and so I can't be mad at it. Yep, back of the build is starting to look a lot better now. What are your favorite non-Minecraft games to play? What are some of the games you'd like to try? My current favorite non-Minecraft games are Team Fight Tactics, Stardew Valley, Animal Crossing, Pokemon, and Valorant. That is quite the variety, but that's what I've been playing lately. Fox Games asked, do you have merch? If not, why? Um, I do have merch. It kind of sucks and I want to do new merch. Speaking of new merch, I do have an Empire's Makeship plush coming out and also something for Hermitcraft coming out in the new year. I don't know when exactly you'll get to see that, but there are two current merch-like things coming out. And as for actual clothing options, I want to do more of that. It's just been difficult to find a clothing brand that works with influencers that I actually like. I think that'll be another one of my goals for 2023 is getting some actual good quality merch going. I will certainly get thinking about that. Thank you for the question. Oh, we should sleep, pig. Hold on. Why is nobody sleeping? Flying bot, flying bot. Ow, that pa that was painful. Really spiky. That's my chandelier. <laughs> it's lovely and not child friendly. Too many sharp edges. <laughs> child Gem friendly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gem, I need your help this Christmas season. Uh huh. I need a disc. Do you have a disc spare? I require your disc. I <laughs> uh, maybe. Um. Surely, Jem, you would help me in my time of Christmas need. Well, it's not that I don't want to help you. It's just that I don't have very many things. Ow. Wow, everything's sharp around here. It's like I'm, I'm following you through and checking all of them as you go. That's good. It's not looking If I don't promising. find one, then Jimmy won't be getting his Christmas gift. You know, we could just get a skeleton. Oh, here's, here's which one. You can have one of these. These are kind of rare. Will I get them back? I don't know. What happens if you do a custom disc? Does it change the disc entirely? Oh yeah, don't do that to these. <laughs> don't do that to other side. <laughs> no, I like other side. That's what we want to keep. <laughs> uh, we could no, try you have, to like, get one. Cat or something. <laughs> I'll take cat. I don't. Why? Th is this just your chess system? It doesn't seem very organized. It, it looks like it started organized and then it went don't wrong. Don't you start with me. Get out of here. <laughs> You come to my <laughs> mega base. I'm sorry. I mean, you've seen my base. I don't have. I don't have a. Have system. you seen my storage system on Empires? No. <laughs> it's much worse. Um, we can try to get a disc together. It should be pretty easy. I'm down. I'm down. Okay, we have to try to see. get that skeleton to hit that creeper. I can Got see it. The skeleton. Yeah. Which so don't is, let so the creeper skeleton. explode. You you bring the creeper. I'll bring the skeleton. Skeleton will track me. Well, we just have to um. It's okay, I've got it. All right, you need the skeleton to, all right. Okay. No, 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 no. no. All right. <laughs> I got stuck on a bit of warp from terrain. <laughs> okay, Um. now we don't have a creeper. Whoa. Oh, there's two creepers and three skeletons. This is gonna be extra hard. Or oh, extra easy, because there's so many of them. Yeah, that's, I like your mindset. Okay, okay. Okay, it's going for you. They're all going for you. You have... No, no my god, Gem. I'm softening them. No, that's smart. Okay, that one's got a big bow. Yeah, this hurts. I'm not going to lie to you. They're, they're lined up really well. They're lined up really well. <gasps> nice. That okay, worked. That one. worked. Got that it, worked. It, that it, worked. It, that it, worked. It. Did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Run it. Run it out. Run it out. Fly away. Fly away. Fly away. <laughs> Incredible work. God, that's we're my good. neighbor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm gonna say it was mostly you, as you can tell by all the arrows in you, but you took one for the team, for the Christmas spirit. <laughs> You're welcome. I think now that I've got that sort of structure worked out, maybe I'll finally work on some of the flooring. Probably just gonna put it all on this layer to start. 
I cannot wait until we finally have time to work on this interior. It's going to be so satisfying. Speaking of time, we've got our next question. Hufflepaz asks, how do you manage your time this year from making videos, editing, and your IRL stuff? Which one was your priority? That is a really lovely question. Thank you for asking. So I had a really weird year this year. If you remember one of my early series, my 1.18 series, which by the way, some of you asked about, I, I think I'm gonna call that one done. I'm not sure. I, 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 think it's, I think it's done. Anyways, in that series last year, I talked about my goals for 2022. And in it, I mentioned that I didn't have any actual number growth goals for the channel. So I didn't wanna focus on hopping on any trends, doing any amount of live streaming or doing doing anything really career based. I wanted to keep what I have and be grateful for it and I wanted to spend more time with friends and family. And now that I was finished college, I just wanted to spend my time seeing some of the world because when I was in college, I really I just had no time. So, in 2022, I went on two international trips. One was having the amazing privilege of taking my parents on their bucket list trip to London, and one was going to Seattle to see my beautiful friend Flip and his wife get married. It was so fun. I also moved, got a puppy, and visited home to see my grandparents a lot. So you could say that my priorities were not really in the editing and video making realm at all, but I planned it like that. As for time management in an actual workday, I've changed my workflow recently. So I record everything on my PC and I send it to my laptop so that I can edit wherever I am. So if I want to go visit my parents, I can do that and I can edit and continue working at home from my laptop. That setup allows me to be a lot more mobile and it's gonna help a lot over Christmas. It's probably helped with this video that you're watching right now. Did it help? Did it help editing, Gem? How long each video actually takes varies wildly from video to video. If you're seeing clips with a lot of my friends, those probably took a lot less long than if you're seeing a clip of this build being built. Because this takes a long time and it's really boring. Luckily for you guys, we have these statistics so I can actually see how much time I have in game. 9.79 days. <laughs> okay, well, let's do some math. So that's roughly 235 hours. And that many hours divided by 20 episodes is roughly 11 or 12 hours. We'll factor in probably a tiny bit of AFK time, although I haven't AFK'd that much, and get to roughly probably 8 to 10 hours per episode in game. Probably translating to about 6 hours in editing, maybe, although to be honest, I don't really track it. It could be a lot more. I lose track of time when I'm editing. And then of course the uploading process itself takes time, making a thumbnail, things like that. All in all though, it, it's really not too bad. The thing that you don't see in content creation that takes the most time is actually the part where I write the episode. So before every episode, I have to think of an idea. So for example, for this episode, I spent about two or three hours posting about the Q&A and then picking out Q&A questions and writing them down and picking out the order that I would say them in and then picking out bits of video that would go in between that to make it more entertaining. All of that takes a surprisingly long amount of time and I do it for every single video. I write out what I wanna do, I make sure it's all gonna be interesting, I pick out what the funny bits are gonna be and what the grindy bits are gonna be and I make sure that the pacing is all really good. I don't know if that answered that question at all, I kind of got on a tangent, but I hope that it answered something. Speaking of tangents, I have a dog! Not just in Hermitcraft though, I've had this puppy for a while, but I also have a dog in real life now, and some of you asked questions about my lovely Winnie. Ginger Claw's asking me how taking care of a puppy has been. It's been really good, I love Winnie. Winnie is my chocolate lab puppy that I just recently got. I love Winnie. I think the biggest difference in my life with Winnie is that she has given me a very good work-life balance. I get lots of outdoor time every single day, she reminds reminds me to take lots of breaks, and I'm still so far able to get my work done. At first I would say that it was really challenging to work from home with a small puppy, but she quickly adjusted to my schedule, and at this point things are fairly normal. I take more breaks than I used to, but I think that's a fairly healthy thing to be honest. I really am enjoying having her in my life. I've wanted a puppy or a dog for as long as I can remember, and she just fits with me perfectly. I love her. We should really make an automatic sugarcane farm at some point. I feel like that would be really useful. I feel like I would never have to buy rockets ever again if I did that. Have I answered too many questions? Is this enough yet? <laughs> I'm having so much fun. So I'm gonna rapid fire a few more. And look at how this interior is looking, by the way. I feel like in the new year, we're gonna be able to do some epic stuff here. Like this is starting to look really awesome. We are gonna have to do something with Mackenzie though. 
I'm sorry, Mackenzie. I think that's enough working on the base for right now. Let's go and do some relaxing mining and hopefully get some diamonds while I rapid fire a few questions. First question is, what do I call my creator friends in real life? So as a bunch of you know, I have met a bunch of people both from Empires and Hermitcraft this year on both of my travels to London and to Seattle. This answer varies from person to person. If you're ever wondering what someone prefers to be called, you should just ask, don't be afraid. For me personally, I prefer to be called Gem, as I answered earlier. So even in real life, I was going up to people, shaking their hand and saying, hi, I am Gem. I think for some people that's probably weird, but for the most part, all of us call each other by our online names. It's what we're used to being called. So for Sausage, for example, I met him in the airport and screamed Sausage super happily across the airport for all to hear. I have no shame. When I met Grian and False, I called them Grian and False. Obviously though, I do have friends like Jimmy who prefer to be called Jimmy and not Solidarity Gaming. So yeah, as I'm saying, it, it just varies from person to person and you'd have to ask the individual person. And for me, I think that my answer could potentially change in the future. I do see myself potentially going by my name eventually, especially if I ever started vlogging. Which leads me into the next question, am I ever going to make any vlogs? And <laughs> to be honest, I would love to. I've tried to film vlogs before and I'm always just, I don't know, very self-conscious about it. I find it very difficult. It's a whole different skill set using a camera in real life, I will tell you that. It is something that I would like to learn though and I would love to be able to do vlogs, maybe hiking or doing something with Winnie where I could show all of you how amazing Newfoundland where I live is. I don't know if I'm gonna do that anytime soon though. Oh, hello. I was picking out a question, go away. Okay, another question that I'm seeing a lot that I want to get to is if I have any tips for balancing both YouTube and college. If you're just watching from Hermitcraft, you may not know this, but I was in college for the vast majority of my YouTube career. It's only been this year that I've really been completely free of that life, thankfully, since I graduated. I did med lab science for anybody wondering, so I would be working in the hospital, like doing blood samples or histology or, you know, different diagnostic stuff to help the doctors out. I am not planning on doing that, however. I'm gonna stick with YouTube for as long as I can, but the hospital work is a good hobby slash backup plan, I guess. I do really miss college and working in the hospital sometimes though. Even if I was only there as a student, it was such a good life experience. As for how I balanced it with YouTube, oh boy, it was really hard. Like, it, it, it was very hard. I, I don't even know if I really have that much useful advice for you other than you you just have to push through it. If you're really passionate about YouTube like I was, then you'll do it, but it's hard. Your college is gonna suffer and your channel is gonna suffer both at the same time because multitasking on that level is hard. I'm out of torches, so I'm gonna return to the surface. For me personally, I got through college and YouTube at the same time by just pure survival, basically. I had no time for anything else. I had no time for making good friendships. I had no time for relationships. I had no time for pets. I had no time for watching Netflix or watching YouTube. I would literally go to college all day from like 8 until about 4 and then I would quickly eat something whatever I could and then I would maybe work for an hour or two at YouTube and then I would study for two or three hours at a cafe or whatever with some of my friends from school or maybe just home alone and then I would come back in the evening from like 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. until like midnight and I would work again at YouTube. I was uploading a lot less and my videos were a lot worse in quality, but I powered through it and I did it and it was hard and I'm glad that it's over. You may not want to hear this because I know that I certainly did not when I was in college, but the best way to do both college and YouTube at the same time is to really study efficiently. Like when you were in class, when you were in lab, I want you to be studying, right? If the teacher is talking, don't be daydreaming, don't be like on your phone or whatever. Like genuinely be writing notes, be doing up your cue cards, be highlighting stuff, like actually study. Because if you do that, then you don't have to study quite as much outside of the classroom and it just helps. Now, obviously there are some courses that are just very hard and they're gonna require a lot of time outside of the classroom. But the more that you can reduce that and do all of your studying while you're in the actual school building or in that like time Time slot the better I used to bring my cue cards everywhere like if I was in a parking lot waiting for a prescription I would be studying on my cue cards like don't waste any time <laughs> it's, it's gonna suck it's, I'm sorry it's, it's gonna suck but yeah you just have to be very time efficient 
If you are in that position right now and you really want to be a YouTuber but you're in college, I am so proud of you. It is a really hard thing to do. I'm proud of you for sticking with college even though it's hard and I'm proud of you for pursuing your passion even though you can't put your whole entire schedule into it. I know that that's challenging and you're doing great. And with that, everyone, I do believe that's enough questions for today. I'm really sorry if I didn't get to you, but I'm so grateful for all of the questions and for all of you lovely viewers who have been watching me. Thank you so much for this amazing year. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you watching this. You don't even know. I actually had a question for all of you. If you've watched to the end of this video, okay, I want you to take a second and really think about this question because I'm genuinely curious and I think it'll be cool to read the responses. I want you to answer this from either the perspective of you as a Minecraft player or you as a viewer, whichever one. I want to know from this crossover, if you watched both Empires and Hermitcraft, which build style did you like the most? Not if you like Elven versus Medieval or if you like Blue versus Orange. More so, do you prefer the giant, beautiful mega structure that I have behind me? Or did you prefer empires where it was a bunch of smaller to mid-sized buildings all separated out, becoming something large? I'm asking because I think I have a preference and I want to know where my viewers kind of stand on this. So, mega structure versus separated smaller structures. Let me know what's more entertaining to watch and what's more entertaining for you to do in your own worlds. And with that, I think I'm done. This has been an amazing year. Thank you once again, and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'd appreciate it. See you later. Goodbye, everyone.